Good afternoon, everyone. This video is brought to you by foodforliberty.com forward slash adapt 2030. Heirloom seed kits with 38 varieties of non-GMO, non-hybrid vegetable seeds. Enough for a 10 acre garden. Check the link below and also see what else they offer to help you prepare for this grand solar minimum. And front page news across the planet, an iceberg has broken off down in Antarctica. And this iceberg is so large, it's actually going to affect the planet. Well, not really, because in 1956, there was an iceberg six times this size. And in 1927, four times the size of this one. And the media will have you believe it's all because of global warming, yet the temperatures are dropping in Antarctica. Even when we look at December, which is the highest of the summer in the southern hemisphere, it's still minus 14.5 C, where that ice sheet broke off. And then now it's minus 31 a week ago when it broke off, so I don't know how ice can melt unless there's underwater volcanic activity, which there is all over the Antarctic Peninsula. In, in every grand solar minimum, there's a direct correlation of volcanic activity increases. And here we are entering into a grand solar minimum. So you might look for other increases in volcanism like the steam, the volcanoes that just have awoken under the ice sheet of Greenland. And if you haven't seen, the petition is still open to name the new grand solar minimum, the Eddy minimum, based on Jack Eddy's research. And while you're watching the video, please remember to subscribe to Adapt 2030 and click the bell to stay subscribed. And newspapers across the planet just having a field day reporting on global warming because this Iceberg is broken off the Larsen shelf. Here's an image for you. You can see where the crack is. It's been progressing for over a year now and it's finally broken through and the iceberg is free. Well, it's about 300 meters offshore. That's all the further it's gotten. Larsen sea ice shelf, location for you here on the Antarctic Peninsula. The media keeps trying to put these super scary sizes out there. It's the size of whales. It's the size of Delaware. It's the size of two million penguins on top of each other. Now, when you notice this crack, one thing discernible is it's not melting from above. Close up here, when they're flying through this, I don't know what you call it, canyon formed by melting ice somehow, yet the surface is untouched. It must be melting from beneath. But enter Al Gore. The ice shelf has broken away from Antarctica, a jarring reminder of why we must solve the climate crisis. Al, it's not melting because of any human induced CO2. But I'm really waiting to see your new inconvenient sequel because I am going to tear that thing apart. With every fact you put, I'm going to find a counter fact. I'm going to put out my own movie based on your movie. That's my project for the month of August. Anyway, back to media gets high on Antarctic crack. Although the Antarctic temperatures seem to be dropping. So let's go back. If this really was melting off because of global warming, then it should be well above freezing and it should just be melting into oblivion. So let's go back into the height of the summer, December 2016 in the Southern Hemisphere. I put a little circle right where the iceberg has broken off the Larsen Sea shelf. And then we look at the temperature, minus 14.5 C. Now, I guess basic science would say that water does not melt below zero. It's frozen at that point, right? Do we agree on that? January, minus 5.8 C. February, minus 9.6 C. March, minus 11. April, minus 19. May, minus 23 degrees Celsius. June, minus 26 degrees Celsius. July, minus 31 Celsius. So wait a minute. It got cooler stepping down as we got toward July when it's breaking off. How's that possible that it would have anything to do with warming on the surface at all? Period. Enough said just from these temperature readings right here. And then all these newspaper articles coming out. I love how they just, we get history lessons. The ice shelf has been floating in the frigid waters of the eastern side of the Antarctic Peninsula for at least 10,000 years. And then I say 10,000 years, wait a second, it was colder 11,000 years ago. It was colder 12,000 years ago. You ever heard of the Younger Dryas cooling? Wait a second, 
So you're telling me that when it was cooler, there was no ice, but now that it's warmer, suddenly it formed ice. So you see how this makes no sense the way they write these articles. So let's actually get some glaciologists that are on the Midas project involved with mapping these ice shelves. Let's see what they have to say. Well, the director of this, Dr. Martin O'Leary, we're not aware of any link to human-induced climate change. Okay, then why are all the newspapers globally spouting that it's because of climate change and CO2 warming? And then another professor, Adrian Luckman, from Swansea University, still same department. Opinions in the scientific community are divided. So again, they're not even sure what's causing this. Iceberg breaking away from Antarctica... Here we go, the detail. I want you to notice the area on the map. This is the peninsula of Antarctica. Notice the live volcanoes underwater. And I also want you to match it up. It's pretty much directly south, right to the edge where it says B, the, all those volcanoes right there. That's the Ross Ice Shelf. Look at all the active volcanoes there. Now let's look at the ice shelves. Remember a couple years ago, they were saying the same thing. Ross Ice Shelf, it's breaking off, it's global warming. Yet I just showed you those active volcanoes under there. So we got active volcanoes under the Ross and the Larsen Sea, and they're both breaking off and they're blaming global warming. And this map and contour comes from Joe Nova. Great site, by the way. A lot of information there. And then we jump over to a paper from Princeton University. Gravity data shows that Antarctic ice sheet is melting increasingly faster. But wait, never mind the active volcanoes under the ice. They talk about the high heat flow through the crust in the region may influence the stability. Volcanoes erupting under an ice sheet might turn it to water and affect the stability. Wow, that's amazing. I never would have thought water would do that with the volcano. Okay, well anyway, let's move on. Volcano discovered smoldering a kilometer under West Antarctica. Oh yeah, isn't that the place they kept saying it's melting? Right over here, they even had a breakthrough recently. You can even see the lava. Now here's just a simple question. I wonder if lava would melt ice. Why would I ask such a question? I just back to it's, it's CO2. Shh, don't say anything. Just agree it's CO2. Pay your global consumption tax. And again, even more references, which I've linked below in the description box. And I hope you look at all the different references that I have for volcanic activity under Antarctica and the Grand Solar Minimum Intensification of Volcanic Activity. And then if you go over to WhatsApp with that, they have all these other papers linked. New paper finds that West Antarctic glaciers melting from geothermal heat from below. Collapsing glaciers from geothermal heat heat. Now the newspapers would have you believe this is a gloom and doom scenario because a piece of ice broke off from a continent. Russ George, I like what you got on the site. Can this giant Antarctic iceberg save the world? What it talks about is the trapped dust and mineral content that's in there. When it breaks off, it goes into the ocean, it melts. And as it melts, there's plankton that forms and then it creates its own ecosystem with different fish and it talks about a resurgence and growth in actual numbers of fish because of this iceberg here. And then going through some of the comment boards, I found this really interesting link as well, which I linked below in the comment box. Please look it up. It talks about the variance between two time periods. We were told that Antarctica keeps warming. So what they did was they took 1998 to 2015 and then they subtracted the heating out or whatever temperature anomaly it was could have been cooling as well from 1980 to 1997 and this is the overall sea surface temperature anomalies that they came up with blue means colder a little wide out there for you to take a look at it also the media claims this is the giant iceberg, 5,800 square kilometers. 
It's going to just change the world. You know what? That is literally like a little tiny ice cube in the world's oceans. Do you know how vast and how many thousands and thousands and tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands of square kilometers there are on the Earth's surface of ocean and how deep our oceans are? This is literally an ice cube that's going to melt. It's going to have no effect. It's not going to raise sea levels. It's not going to do anything like that. But what irks me the most is journalists, shame on you for printing shut stuff. You didn't even do any backtracking to see if there were other instances of this happening in the past. Here we go. 1956, something six times the size of what just broke off ended up in the ocean. Gee, did it affect everybody on Earth? No, it didn't. And then 1927, let's go a little further back. Something four times the volume did the same thing. And they're putting in the newspapers like, oh, it's all these things just happening because it's modern era and humans are always responsible. Could never be a natural force. Pay your global consumption tax to the world government. Here's the newspaper clipping from 1956. I linked it below. Here's even a microfilm snapshot of the U.S. Navy's report of that same iceberg. Was that USS Glacier, the Navy's most powerful icebreaker, sighted that iceberg more than twice the size of Connecticut, which means it was larger than the one that just broke off. But of course, Guardian blaming it all on global warming. The Independent in the UK gotta be global warming. But I'm glad we did keep everything on microfilm. And Tony Heller, thank you for posting those clips and the, the images from those papers. I also linked to Real Climate Science below. Everything's linked. All this thing you keep questioning. Oh, how's this and how's that? I linked everything below. And I like how this is so well written here. Climate fraudsters are busy today touting Antarctic iceberg the size of Delaware. But in fact... Something in 1956, five times the size broke off. How did they forget that? And then we come to the mysterious plumes of steam suddenly rising from Greenland. This was taken by a pilot from Icelandic air. So now we got volcanoes starting under Greenland. A bit close up here. And the only thing I can possibly say is it was expected that there'd be more volcanism and tectonic activity during the entry and bottom of this grand solar minimum. Now we're starting to see a lot of activity globally right now. Earthquakes, volcanoes all over the place that are unexpected starting up after 100 year multi-century cycles. This is how quick we're going to descend into the grand solar minimum. And then you start to take a look at the volcanic aerosols found in the ice sheets and they peg pretty much 100% to the grand solar minimums. So this only goes back through the modern minimum, the Dalton minimum and the 1815 year without a summer. And then we got like 1640, 1700 with the eruptions. And that was the modern minimum. So we need to go a little further back in time. So I'm going to take you back 2,500 years here and notice the outliers. That year without a summer, 1815 is actually a really small eruption compared to what's occurred in historical cycles through these grand solar minimums. 1257, that was another Indonesian eruption. 1815, Indonesian eruption. It's all these equatorial volcanoes that go off during the grand solar minimums. 540, late antique little ice age. We rock back into 44 BC. Oh wait, that's so politically incorrect for saying BC. Oh well, deal with it. And then we find 426 BC. So these two largest eruptions during grand solar minimums were 426 BC and 1257. So if we're going to count time, we need to do what? 2,450 years approximately. And then we start to take a look here at the Bray cycle. What if there are more powerful cycles that are compounding on top of John Casey's 206 year and then we double that into the modern minimum at 412? What if we're getting into something on the 9,600 year cycle? You know, Jack Eddy, he also pegged the thousand year cycle. But what if we're back to a 2,400 year cycle? And this is the reason that there's obscure volcanoes starting to go off everywhere under ice sheets, melting glaciers. And here we are. If it is a 2,400 year cycle, 
that 426 BC eruption pattern is coming right back today. And speaking of Jack Eddy, to name this new grand solar minimum the Eddy Minimum, there is a petition out there. I linked this below as well, the Eddy Minimum Petition. They're looking for at least a thousand signatures. They've already eclipsed that, but make sure you jump over there. Support that so we're all on the same page of when we're talking about this event that it does have a categorical name that the media can't start to switch it because it has been named. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. As you can see, there's just smoke and mirrors everywhere. No pun intended with the smoke from the volcanoes, but literally in the media, smoke and mirrors. And if you'd like to type for reports I'm bringing you, please support me on Patreon and press the subscribe button for Adapt 2030.